Just a quick disclaimer that in this video we'll be showing various DST content creators in a not so positive light. If you don't like drama then I would recommend not watching it. A lot of people might think that this video is unnecessary and I agree to an extent as I actually wrote the script for it many months ago and simply ended up never uploading it. But ultimately I decided that doing so could potentially benefit the community by serving as an example of how quickly misinformation can spread and how easy it is for us to jump into a bandwagon and throw endless amounts of hate to people who don't actually deserve it. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. From the title and thumbnail, most of you should already know what this video is about. Yes, this is a video about DST content creator The Beard 777 To be precise, the main topic I'll be discussing will be the art theft scandal that happened in 2020. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should watch James Buckets and Jesse's Games videos on the subject, as I'll be more or less directly responding to everything that was said by them. But to summarize, in May of 2020, multiple DST content creators publicly came out to speak against the Beard 777. The reason for this was that, in their words, Beard had scammed multiple artists in his audience in order to get artworks for free that he would then be able to profit from. The two videos were uploaded to explain the situation to the community, publicly denounce Beard for his behavior, and in the process, request that the artists that submitted artworks be given proper payment. Both videos are still up to this day, as according to the creators, Beard has still not given the proper compensation that was requested from him. The art theft scandal was easily the single biggest content creator related controversy that has ever happened in the DSD community, and to this very day it's nearly impossible to bring up the Beard 777 in forums or public chats without someone bringing up this controversy, so it's safe to say that the whole situation left a permanent stain on Beard's reputation. In this video, I will be analyzing the controversy from a very different angle, because in spite of the huge backlash and the large number of content creators that spoke out against Beard, there is actually very little evidence that the majority of the things I mentioned that Beard was accused of actually happened. And for that reason, I am making this video. Because I firmly believe that there was simply never an art theft, and the controversy was the result of certain content creators intentionally or unintentionally twisting events and exaggerating Beard's actions in a way that made him look like an evil person, including making accusations that are demonstrably false, and not only did they never face any backlash because of that, but to this very day those same content creators are commonly seen as the good guys of the DSD community. So I am here to finally shine some light on what actually happened and what didn't. I know these are very heavy accusations to make, and some of these content creators are very beloved in the DST community, but my goal is not to encourage anyone to send hate towards any of the people mentioned in this video. My one and only goal by making this is for this to serve as a lesson that you cannot trust everything you see on the internet, and we should try to verify the validity of serious accusations, even when they come from people that we admire. I must clarify that I had no involvement whatsoever in the beer drama when it happened, and I am completely external to the entire situation. I still decided to be the one to publish this video because it simply doesn't sit right with me to do nothing as more misinformation and hate keeps getting spread around the community, and therefore I think the topic of this video concerns all of us nonetheless. Since I was not present when the controversy happened, the things I will be saying throughout this video will not be from my perspective, but rather I reached out to multiple DST content creators that were involved in the drama, as well as many of the artists that Beer supposedly scammed in order to get their sides of the story, which I will be continuously referencing as my sources for the majority of my arguments. I will not be revealing the names of anyone who agreed to provide their testimonies, for obvious reasons. With all of that said, let me begin to explain the whole situation from the very beginning, which actually goes back further than the art controversy itself. To understand why the art controversy happened, we first have to talk about the Varg firm situation. Most of you should already be aware of what this was, but for those that don't, the story that you'll hear around the community goes something like this. In 2019, the Beard 777 saw a video by DST YouTuber Gabriel Gabriel showcasing his design for a farm. Beard then shamelessly plagiarized the video and claimed that he made the design himself. Gabriel proceeded to write a Reddit post calling out Beard for his behavior, and when other content creators came out in support of Gabriel, Beard simply played the victim and refused to give him any credit whatsoever. This story has been repeated countless times throughout the community, and it's because of this situation that it is commonly brought up that Beard plagiarizes videos from other content creators. At this point, all of the things I mentioned are simply taken as fact, but the reality is that much like the art controversy, the majority of the things I mentioned in this story straight up didn't actually happen, and as far as I know, I am the only person that has actually publicly pointed this out. Here's the thing, the very same reddit post Gabriel Gabriel made exposing Beard for stealing the design actually proves that Beard was innocent. 
let me go over it and explain. In the Reddit post, Gabriel describes how he personally requested Beard by himself to showcase two of his farm designs. Beard accepted and showcased them in his channel, the gem farm being the main focus of the thread. Gabriel then describes how Beard chose not to give him credit, despite him expecting it, and how Beard denied taking inspiration from anyone to make them, which prompted Gabriel to go around multiple DST communities calling Beard out for what he had done. But here's the problem. If you look at the screenshots that Gabriel himself posted as evidence of what happened, you may notice that something doesn't actually add up in the story. I don't blame you if you don't notice it, because it seems like nobody actually has, but here's the thing, Gabriel did not ask Beard for credit when he sent him those videos. In fact, Gabriel never even directly told Beard that the designs were made by him. The gem farm video only mentions it very briefly, and it's very easy to miss. And the Moonrock Farm video straight up does not mention Gabriel being the creator of it. This means it's completely unreasonable to expect Beard to have credited Gabriel as the creator of the farms, when he had absolutely no way to know at the time that the designs belonged to him. But wait, didn't Beard claim the design as his own, or at the very least deny taking it from someone else? Well, it turns out that straight up never happened either. In the screenshot that Gabriel posted in the Reddit thread to back this claim up, Nowhere does Beard say any of those things. It's incredibly obvious that in this comment, he's referring to the fact that he taught himself how to make videos, not that he made the design that he was showcasing. So the things that Gabriel is claiming here are just straight up false. And to make matters even more confusing, something I don't really have an explanation for is the fact that Gabriel was actually aware that he forgot to ask Beard for credit the whole time. In the Reddit post, his response to this is that he hinted at the fact that he wanted a shout out. But that excuse simply does not hold up against the screenshots that he himself chose to share, as no such implication is made in any of his messages. Am I accusing Gabriel Gabriel of intentionally lying to hurt Beard's reputation? I don't think that he did it on purpose. Personally, I think this was all one really big sequence of misunderstandings that was handled poorly by everyone involved. And I don't think that he was intentionally trying to create drama either. However, the undeniable truth is that this entire situation was entirely Gabriel's fault. Beard did not knowingly do anything against Gabriel. He was the one who failed to clearly request credit and attribute the designs to himself, and by immediately choosing the nuclear option to publicly call Beard out as a bad person, he was no longer in any position to expect him to listen to his demands. Small update, while I was finalizing this script, JQ Soros uploaded a video in which he, alongside Gabriel Gabriel, spent an entire minute just shitting on Beard for stealing the Varkron design and claiming it as his own. You want to steal their design? Then we will claim it as our own. <laughs> no, literally. We will plagiarize it exactly, even though we don't understand the design choices made to build it and therefore don't understand the intricacies of the design nor how to operate it efficiently or approve it. Uh, what? You can't steal that, it's my design. You are not the grandfather of Don't Starve Together, nor any of its farms, Gabriel. As such, this one now belongs to me. <laughs> Quick, more talks later. <laughs> Your boss, what? who do, who you, do you, work you work for? The Bread 666. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, they're publicly making a false accusation against someone in a sponsored video nonetheless. Which I also find to be really hypocritical, considering JQ Soros himself has taken strategies from me and other content creators and falsely claimed that he was the one who discovered them. So I just wanted to say that I kind of take back what I said in the previous paragraph. Gabriel at first might not have done anything in bad faith, but judging by his attitude in that video and the fact that his last update to the Reddit post was as recent as 2022, it's extremely clear that he does not regret anything that happened, nor does he take responsibility for anything he did wrong. There is no way to justify this. He's extremely childish, and besides the fact that he's beating at that horse years later, he's doing so over something that literally never happened. These content creators are publicly slandering him and making jokes about it, and nobody is going to call them out for this behavior. I really hope Gabriel apologizes after this video comes out, but I highly doubt that he's ever going to admit that he did anything wrong. Let's continue with the rest of the script that I had written. Now, I'm not claiming Beard did everything right in this situation. His handling of the criticism was really poor, as he seemed very dedicated towards arguing that Gabriel did not deserve credit in general, when he could have simply pointed out that he had no way to know that he was expected to give credit, something that he only mentioned once in a passing comment as far as I'm aware. And this reaction from him didn't sit well with a lot of people. 
Additionally, him blocking Gabriel was taken by many people as an admission of guilt. The aggressive manner in which he responded to a lot of the comments and his questionable arguments to defend that Gabriel didn't deserve credit for the bar crime is not something that I'm going to try to justify, and he definitely could have handled this much better. But at the same time, his responses do make perfect sense once you take into account the context that I just described. From his perspective, Gabriel simply went on a crusade against him for absolutely no reason, which to him most likely signaled that he was looking for attention, and I don't blame him for thinking that. Many people, including some content creators, say that Beard was playing the victim in this situation. But the thing is, for all intents and purposes, Beard was the victim. I know it's easy to laugh at the fact that he called this a witch hunt, but Gabriel himself admitted in the Reddit post that he was going around Discord servers telling people to call Beard out in the comments of his videos, which at least in my opinion constitutes a wish hunt, regardless of whether they believe they had good intentions. At least to me, it's no surprise that after this funnel, Beard straight up stopped interacting with all other TST content creators, as many of them came out in support of Gabriel, who was pretty much objectively in the wrong and tried to ruin Beard's reputation over things that he never actually did. A lot of people criticize Beard for not responding to any criticism from other content creators, and Beard's poor handling of criticism as a whole will be a recurring theme throughout this video, but I think knowing the full context behind this controversy really helps to understand why Beard behaves the way that he does, even if you don't necessarily agree with him. Now that I've explained that situation, I can begin to talk about the central topic of this video, which is the Arthur scandal. There is a lot to talk about here, so I have to divide this into multiple sections and talk about each part individually. For this section, I will be focusing on debunking the major points and accusations made in the videos by James Bucket and Jazz's games relating to the incident. There were many more things said in these videos that I want to talk about, but we'll get to those later. For now, I'll simply start with the major accusations from both videos, which I have compiled here. And just a short disclaimer before we begin, I want you to keep in mind that not a single one of these accusations had a single piece of evidence to support it presented in the videos. The closest thing to proof that was shown in either of them was a blurry screenshot of Beer's Discord server that doesn't actually support anything. This by itself should have already been a red flag for a lot of people, and it concerns me that this proves that as long as a content creator is liked enough by the community, they can pretty much just make up anything they want without showing any evidence, and people will believe them. Technically, it's not actually my responsibility to show evidence of any of my counter-arguments, because the burden of proof was always on these content creators for making the accusations in the first place, proof that they never presented. Of course, I will be showing as much evidence as I can nonetheless. Let's move to the first major point that I want to talk about. Beard advertised an art showcase, which was a cover-up for asking for free channel art. The video starts up with a person saying how he wants to host an art showcase, how he wants to show off the artwork submitted to him, and to give the respective artists exposure in the process. Now that doesn't sound too bad, but this was only a cover up for his true plan. Immediately after saying that, he starts asking artworks for himself, such as his channel banner, channel icon, and emotes. Not just for YouTube, but platforms like Twitch and Twitter as well. This first point is one that has caused a lot of confusion about what Beard's announcement video actually said. And either unintentionally or intentionally, James Bucket confounded two different things in a way that made Beard's actions look much more malicious than they actually were. So what exactly was the announcement about? Well, the video has long since been taken down by Beard, so there wasn't exactly anybody who could come out to clarify what was actually said in it. But thankfully, while talking to various people for the making of this video, I managed to get my hands on the actual announcement from Beard, so I can finally clarify what he said and clear up all the confusion. The announcement video consists of two parts. In the first half of it, he announces an art showcase he wants to do, in which people in his audience can submit any art they've made, and he would compile it in one video showcasing the artworks he likes the most. Keep in mind, this is not channel-related art. This is any kind of art. I'm telling you, submit anything you have, and you have two weeks. Two weeks to submit what you got in the Discord, Twitter, anything. And uh, in two weeks from now, I'll make an art showcase of just everything we have. This showcase is still available on his channel, and you can watch it right now. This is the art showcase that Beard was announcing, just a video reacting to artworks from his audience. Not a scheme to obtain free channel arts under the promise of exposure like James Bucket's really confusing wording makes it seem. 
Later on, James does briefly acknowledge the art showcase as a separate thing, which kind of confuses me as to why he would choose to word the beginning of his video in such a misleading manner. The second half of the video is where there are real problems to be had, because to summarize, yes, this is basically just Beard asking for free channel art, even going as far as to spend several minutes outlining the specific requirements for each. So Beard is the bad guy then, right? Why am I making this video? Well, the problem here is that this is pretty much the full extent of what Beard actually did, and I need to stop here to clarify that the point of this video is not to defend the Beard 777. I had zero interactions with this content creator, and for some reason I'm banned from his Discord server, so I owe absolutely nothing to him. But the thing is, I firmly believe that just because you don't like someone, it doesn't automatically make it okay to lie and misinform about them, like we'll be seeing throughout this video. I'm not going to sit here and say that Beard was morally right for requesting free artworks from his audience, and I believe that up until that point, the criticism he got from other content creators was perfectly justified. However, I'm also not going to put myself on some sort of moral high ground and pretend that just because he did that he's an evil person. This is not something I would ever do, but at the same time I don't believe it's worth creating a harassment campaign over, but I digress. So Beard requested free artworks from his audience. That much is more or less true, at least at first, but after this point pretty much everything he was accused of was either false, twisted from actual facts, or something that technically happened, but was grossly over exaggerated to make Beard look like a horrible person. Let's talk about the claim that Beard was trying to scam his artists with the promise of exposure. In their videos, both James and Jassy declared that what Beard was doing was a scam to trick artists into submitting free artworks, under the promise of then receiving exposure as a prize. Jassy explicitly compares this to a scam in which someone would host a contest with the promise of an exposure prize, being used to essentially commission multiple artworks for free. Basically, a company will host an art contest for people to design a logo or general branding and the winners will have their art used by the company in exchange for either a cash prize or sometimes just the promise of exposure. These contests are textbook scams because they effectively commission multiple artists to do the same job without paying the vast majority for their work. And now, one of the most successful DST YouTubers has just pulled off the exact same scam, asking his fans to submit entries of banners, logos, and emotes to use on his channel. However, I think that this comparison greatly mischaracterizes what Beard was actually saying in the video. So then, what did Beard promise in return for the artworks? Well, the short answer is nothing. I need this opportunity to clarify something else Jazz and Jim said. They both mentioned in their videos that there was no mention of compensation in the announcement video. In the announcement video, there was no mention of compensation. We say all for free because there is absolutely no mention of any compensation for those channel arts he'll be receiving. And this is technically true? The issue with this claim is that the part that is true doesn't tell the whole story, and is being used in a way that makes Beard look much more malicious than in reality. Meanwhile, the part that is false has straight up not been acknowledged by anyone, as far as I know. This statement paints a picture of Beard intentionally avoiding mentioning compensation, which, as Jazz's comparison supports, creates this narrative that Beard was tricking artists into submitting art under the possibility of winning a prize for their work if it was good enough. This is simply not what happened. In the announcement video, Beard actually makes it quite clear that this should not be treated as a contest and anyone who submits arts for his channel should only be doing so to help decorate his channel. But again, in summary, hey, if you've seen our channel art and you want to change it and you want to have input and you just want to make it way better than what I did over five years ago, just do it, okay? You got two weeks, two weeks, and then things will be updated. Thank you, folks, and I'll see you next time. Beard did not trick anyone here to submit art with the promise of any kind of reward. However, even this doesn't exactly tell the whole story, because Beard would later end up changing his mind anyway and confirming that he would privately compensate anyone whose art he decided to use. And keep in mind, this was before the videos calling him out and demanding him to pay the artist came out. It's just that for some reason nobody else has decided to acknowledge this. I'll touch on this again later, but for now just keep this in mind while we keep discussing the accusations. Let's talk about the claim that Beard was trying to pay his artists with exposure. Ignoring the part where Beard paid the artists anyway, this is another case of something that kind of happened, being exaggerated to the point where it communicates a completely different narrative. 
What happened is that in the announcement video, Beard does mention a couple times that if you submit channel art to him, then you could have him show the artwork and your name in the art showcase that I previously mentioned. This is the only way in which these two things are connected. As for the people who would love the opportunity to help this channel and update its channel art, you too will also be in that showcase even if your thing is not chosen, okay? I want you to know that. Like if I choose yours, but there's seven others who submitted something, those seven others are still going to be in the video, all right? I'm still going to say, hey, look, these people wanted to help with the email. This is what they look like. I don't blame anyone for choosing to interpret this as Beard trying to pay his artists in exposure. The problem is once again how James and Jassy presented this in their videos, which paints a very different picture of what Beard actually said. They both simply claimed that Beard promised to pay his artists in exposure and then didn't elaborate further. They just left it at that. No evidence, no elaboration. Saying this without any further elaboration only serves to create the image that Beard was trying to pull off an exposure scam, just like the ones Jassy alluded to. And it creates this completely different narrative of Beard offering exposure as a substitute for real compensation, something he never actually did, and misrepresents the story in a way that made many people in their audiences believe that artists only submitted art because they wanted exposure, which they did not. The reality is that the parts where he mentions anything that could be interpreted as a promise to pay an exposure are extremely brief and I myself didn't even realize the first time I watched the announcement video that this was what Jazzy and James were referring to when they said that Beard promised to pay artists in exposure. Beard clearly does not draw attention to this, nor does he try to advertise this as the reason to submit art. It's basically just a passing comment to clarify that this is the list he's going to do, and not the scheme to take advantage of desperate artists like these content creators are claiming. There is basically no way someone could have watched Beard's video and chosen to submit art that they otherwise wouldn't have just because Beard mentioned he would say the names of the artist. And if it feels like I'm just doing mental gymnastics to defend the fact that Beard tried to scam artists, well, you don't have to take my word for it. Because all of the artists that came out to give their side of the story when the whole drama occurred also said this exact thing. They all confirmed that no, they did not submit art because Beard promised exposure, they just wanted to support Beard by decorating his channel. Oh yeah, if you didn't know, which unsurprisingly most people don't, when James and Jassy published their videos, the very same artists that were supposed to be the victims of the scam actually came out to defend Beard and clarified that this was all a misunderstanding and that at no point were they tricked into submitting artworks under the promise of a reward. They just wanted to support Beard and were fully aware that they were doing this for free and absolutely no manipulation was involved. James and Jassy both like to talk a lot about the imaginary victims of this supposed art theft and Jassy's video is straight up titled VST Artists Have Been Ripped Off, but who exactly? I was simply never able to find any artists who thought that Beard had abused their trust or tricked them in any sort of way. But wait, if there were no actual victims in the entire situation, then what the hell was the point of the drama to begin with? I believe I know why this whole drama was blown out of proportion, but I'll be talking about that in the next section. For now, the main takeaway is that Beard did not manipulate anyone into submitting artworks for free. The claims that you frequently hear about Beard scamming artists with the promise of exposure are demonstrably false. As far as I'm aware, this was a completely victimless situation, and there is no proof of any kind that Beard intended to abuse artists for his own gain. For some reason though, a lot of people have simply never heard of the fact that the artists came out to defend Beard. Maybe because it didn't help the narrative that the community wanted to hear, and I guess most people just kind of assumed that the artists were the ones that called Beard out in the first place, but this was just not the case. Something else I would like to mention that adds a bit of context is that from what I was able to gather, there was already an established community of artists within Beard's community that had already willingly given him free artworks for his channel out of their own volition. This explains why Beard wanted to make an art showcase in the first place, and when you take that into account, Beard's announcement video sounds more like he was telling people who had already given him free art that if they wanted to do so again, it would be best if they submit a channel art that he could actually use instead. This doesn't excuse how he went about it, and he probably shouldn't have done so to begin with, but it does go against the common narrative that Beard was trying to trick naive artists in his audience into giving him free art, and makes his actions look far less malicious once you take this context into account. And I cannot stress enough just how many times Jesse and James attribute malicious motives to Beard's actions in their videos 
well, not having any sort of proof to back up those claims. Of all the things we've looked at so far, the only one that's likely to be true is that Beard was trying to avoid paying for new channel artworks. And like I said, criticizing that was perfectly justified. But nothing Beard did warranted the absurd hate campaign against him that transpired afterwards. Most people will probably disagree with what Beard did, but with all the things that were said about him, I hope that at least some people will be able to agree with me that regardless of what he did, he did not deserve to have other popular content creators publicly spread misinformation about what he did that made him look like an awful person to the average viewer who didn't know what was actually going on behind the scenes. The final point I want to address in this part of the video is that Beard was able to profit from the artworks that he received for free because they were being used for commercial purposes. The DST content creator is taking advantage of the professional work of his artist fans without paying them. This is stuff that's going to improve his product and contribute to his brand. Stuff that will very directly help his product be a success and help him to make money. Those artworks will then be used for branding, aka for commercial use, helping the content creator indirectly make money off of artist's work, which he did not pay a cent. Once again, this is a half-truth that makes Beard look worse when it's simply told like this. Because if you actually think about it, there's very few ways in which Beard could have realistically made any money out of the artworks he requested. To be precise, he requested the following in his video. While they are technically branding, and branding can serve to indirectly make money, especially in the case of companies, the majority of the things on this list are not even in monetized platforms in the first place, and you would have to be grasping at straws in order to make the claim with a straight face that Beard could somehow make any sort of profit out of a YouTube banner, which most people aren't even going to see. I'm not saying it's incorrect to say that Beard could have indirectly profited of some of these in a very limited manner, and I would somewhat agree with that notion, but like many of the previous things we already discussed, both James and Jassy really emphasized this point in their videos without actually elaborating on what they meant. The problem is that their statements paint a picture of Beard intentionally requesting art only to make money off of it, either by selling art that isn't his, or by using it for promotional purposes. None of the arts that he requested fall into that category, as he did not request thumbnails or other kinds of art that do directly contribute to generating profit. Of course, this entire section I just talked about is a moot point anyway, because it's assuming that Beard didn't pay for the artworks, which as I mentioned earlier, he did, so the entire accusation that he was profiting off of artworks he didn't pay for just straight up makes no sense from the get-go. I think we have to ask ourselves, if Beard really was somehow maliciously trying to trick artists into submitting free artworks for his own gain, then what exactly was Beard expecting to accomplish? He didn't request anything that he could make any real profit from, so why did he go through the effort of creating an art showcase that would only serve as a cover-up to get free art that he couldn't even make money off? The entire story that these content creators are telling makes no sense when you actually think about it. If he really did want to exploit artists for profit, he could have very easily just requested people to make thumbnails or advertisements for him, but he only requested things that he couldn't use for anything other than decoration. By this point, I've already addressed pretty much all the major arguments made by Jesse and James Bucket in their videos about the drama, but there were many more things said by those content creators that I believe I need to address as well. These mostly constitute personal attacks and really shitty behavior towards Beard that the DST community not only accepts, but praises. I will also be explaining why I believe this whole controversy even happened, and clarify some more misinformation spread after the videos were published. And once again, I'd like to make it clear. I do not believe Beard was magically the good guy in all of this. But I firmly believe that what James and Jazzy did to him and his reputation was completely unacceptable. Their accusations constitute defamation in every sense of the word, as they were completely unfounded, exaggerated, and essentially attribute everything they could to Malleus to show Beard in the worst light possible, which is an awful thing to do regardless of whether Beard actually did those things wrong. The moment they started twisting facts and misinforming their audiences to launch a hate campaign against Beard that is still going on to this day, those content creators were no longer the good guys of the story. They were abusing their platform and the trust their audiences had in them to sink down someone they didn't like, even if they believed their intentions were in the right place. That said, I do not believe that the majority of the content creators that came out against Beard had enough context to recognize that many of the things the videos were saying were wrong, and their actions should not be held against them. 
I'm sure they believed they were doing the right thing, and I'm certain that if they watch this video, at least the majority of them will be able to admit that the controversy wasn't needed, and things should have been handled very differently. Even Jassy, who made one of the videos against Beard, most likely had good intentions and felt that he had a personal responsibility to discuss the subject, as he himself is an artist. The main content creator I want to speak out against is Jim's Bucket, because I have very strong reasons to believe that he willingly wanted to sink Beard's reputation, regardless of whether he was right or wrong. His behavior throughout this entire situation was frankly disgusting, and his video on Beard is full of personal attacks and ad hominems that clearly show that he did not engage in this situation in good faith from the start. We'll get to that in a bit though, because I want to clarify some other things about this controversy first, specifically what happened outside what was mentioned in those videos. Beard's response to the drama, or lack thereof, was interpreted by a lot of people as an admission of guilt. As far as I know, Beard has never once addressed the situation, and any attempts to get a response out of him only results in getting blocked or banned. I can understand why people have often interpreted this as him silently admitting that he was guilty, but not wanting to acknowledge any of the drama. And in a vacuum I would agree with that view, but I think the way Beard handled the situation had a lot to do with the old Gabriel controversy that I talked about earlier in the video. Beard most likely felt that he had good reasons not to interact with any of the other content creators, to prevent his own statements from being used against him, and to prevent it from affecting his channel as much as he could. As I mentioned before, Beard pretty much stopped interacting with any other content creator after the Gabriel incident. Beard refusing to give any sort of attention to the drama was not exclusive to this situation, as that's something that he has done ever since. So I don't think his lack of a response should be taken as him trying to run away to avoid any responsibility. I believe he felt the damage had already been done, and didn't want to push the issue further, which he was within his right to do, even if you think he should have at least said something about it. Talking to some of the other content creators that were involved in the drama, it seems that Beard refusing to talk to any of them is what led to them choosing to upload the videos in the first place. Apparently, prior to the videos being uploaded, they tried to get in contact with Beard to pressure him into giving compensation to the people who submitted art to him, and when he refused to respond to them, they then decided to make the situation public. What exactly they did to try to get Beard to pay the artist is unclear, however, as I was not able to get any information about that. I want to say that I understand why they felt the need to go public, as they felt as though this was an important issue that had to be resolved, and they had no other means to put pressure on Beard. However, I don't think Beard blocking the creators came even close to justifying that kind of response. It's one thing to publicly call someone out for something they did wrong, but the creators crossed the line here by publicly denouncing Beard as an evil person to hundreds of thousands of people knowing full well that their audiences would go out of their way to witch hunt the person being called out, without even bothering to check whether or not what was being said about that person was actually true. They were no longer seeking justice for the artists, they were just bullying someone they didn't like for doing something they didn't agree with. Two wrongs do not make it right, and at least in this situation, with everything I've said so far, it's very hard for me to say that the creators weren't way more in the wrong than Beard was. Their actions were simply extremely unwarranted, and to rub salt in the wound, they didn't actually achieve anything. Because, as I mentioned earlier, there were no actual victims in this whole fiasco. The very same artists that were supposedly the victims of Beard's actions came out to clarify that they were not affected in any way by what he did, and that they had not been manipulated since they knew very well from the get-go that they were only submitting art to decorate his channel, and expected nothing in return. Speaking to some of them, they felt as though all these people they didn't know were suddenly speaking on their behalf and saying things they didn't agree with, all while being unable to actually have a say in the situation themselves, while being treated as the supposed victims of what was, in reality, a completely victimless situation. One of the artists even told me that they were harassed by the very people that were supposedly trying to protect them just for coming out in defense of Beard. And it's not like James and Jesse weren't aware that artists were leaving comments on their videos, they responded to them, and those responses can basically be summarized as you got scammed, but you're too naive to realize it, so please let me continue defending you against your wishes. This does raise a few questions, so we need to talk about them. If the artists never cared about compensation and they didn't want any of the drama, then why did the content creators even go out of their way to seek compensation for the artists in the first place? Furthermore, why were the videos calling Beard out not taken down as soon as several artists left comments saying that their drama was unnecessary and that they never asked for this? 
This is where we have to talk about Jean's Pocket's actions. A lot of people are under the assumption that the reason the videos speaking out against Beard are still up to this day is because Beard simply ignored them and never paid the artist, despite this being what the creators clearly requested of him. However, as I briefly mentioned earlier, most people are not actually aware that Beard did pay the artist that submitted art to him, confirming he would do so before the two videos exposing him came out. The artists were the ones who confirmed this, and as far as I know, any art that is or was on Beard's channel has almost certainly been paid for. James Bucket himself even acknowledges it in the pinned comment of his video, although with an unsourced claim that he only paid for two artworks. So if the point of the videos was to get Beard to pay the artist, and the artists were paid in spite of not actually expecting to be paid, why hasn't James taken his video down? The short answer is that James Bucket really doesn't like a beard, and he wants the videos to stay up no matter what. This raises more questions than answers, so let's analyze the pinned comment that I just mentioned. Here, James is clearly not happy about the fact that Beard did exactly what he was requesting of him. His statement that Beard only paid to artists, once again, is completely unsourced, even though the burden of proof is very much in James since he's the one making the accusations. After that, the next thing he does is go on a tangent about how Beard mentioned in his video that he might switch between different artworks for his channel, and because of this, the video has to stay up, because James isn't sure whether Beard will pay them for that in the future, if he even switches artworks at all. His response is to basically say that Beard is still guilty because of something that hasn't happened yet, but he could maybe do in the future, and yes, this is as weird as I'm making it sound. And by, by the way, even if I don't use yours now, doesn't mean I'm not going to use it later, because I also love the idea of switching out profile banners and everything. So if I choose somebody's, use it for like a week, week and a half, I don't know, and then I use another buddy's. That's, that's how, what I want this to be like. It's going to be phenomenal. From what I've gathered, the same argument is also the reason why, in spite of Beard mentioning that he would pay the artist even before the drama blew up, the content creator still chose to go through with the videos, as they believed Beard would not pay anyone whose art he didn't immediately use. And while I can understand why they would think that way, I strongly believe that this was an extremely poor excuse to make the entire controversy public, as for all intents and purposes this was an assumption of something that hadn't occurred yet, and by that point there wasn't really anything anyone was asking them to do. But that's not all, because James ends this argument by saying that he won't pull the video down until Beard pays absolutely everyone who ever submitted artworks for him after the announcement video. This is an extremely ridiculous line of thinking, which I think this comment sums up well. According to James Bucket, if a 7 year old submitted a doodle to Beard, then he is obligated to pay them for that work even if he will never use it. And of course, James also expects it to be Beard's responsibility to prove that he paid the 7 year old, in spite of the fact that James has no way to know how many people submitted art to Beard in the first place. And also, how much money exactly does James expect Beard to pay to each artist? He never clarifies this, and it's abundantly clear from his warning that James has no way to keep track of who has been paid and who hasn't. Of course, we have already established a bunch of times that Beard never owed anything to anybody, because he never fooled anyone and nobody was harmed by his actions. And it's even more ridiculous to think that he owes money even to people whose art he's never going to use. The requests James is making make no sense, and in this comment he's clearly just trying to move the goalposts to justify keeping the video up no matter what, without looking like a bad person. If James had really been acting in the interest of the supposed victims, he would have taken the video down a very long time ago instead of doing this. And well, I don't think James ever really cared about the victims to begin with. And I'm not the only one saying this. The artists that I talked to also said they didn't feel as though James genuinely gave a shit about them. I very much feel as though the supposed victims were just an excuse for James to throw shit at Beard and look like the good guy in the process. And what makes me believe this exactly? Well, James Bucket's own words, actually. In fact, it's the first part of the pinned comment that ends up explaining a lot of his behavior. So what exactly happened that made James dislike Beard so much that he was willing to push this controversy so much to sink him down? Well, wouldn't you know it, he was angry because of the Vargram incident. He describes how he felt powerless looking at how Beard played the victim, and this time he decided to take matters into his own hands, even though, as we established before, this prior incident wasn't even Beard's fault. On top of that, James also uses that incident as proof that Beard would try to take his video down, somehow, 
In fact, the Warframe incident was likely the single biggest reason this whole drama even happened in the first place. It's to my understanding that there existed a pretty unanimous dislike for Beard among the content creators who took part in this, even before the art controversy, mostly because of that specific incident. So it's likely that this, more than anything else, is what made it easy for the creators to team up against Beard, without really considering whether they were really justified in their response. So that answers the question of why the videos were still up, even though no harm was done, and there is nothing left for Beard to do. Because simply put, James never actually cared about any of the drama, and he just wanted to cancel Beard in revenge for what he did to Gabriel, and this was his opportunity. Like I said before, I don't believe most of the content creators were acting in bad faith, but James Bucket here is the exception. He straight up admitted it, not just with his words, but with his actions. And if the possibility exists that I'm wrong and he really did care about the artist, then upon seeing this video, he will immediately take his video down, but I'll only be able to know that after I've uploaded it. However, I don't really think there's any possibility that James was acting in good faith, because all it takes is watching his video about the situation one more time with all the context I've provided to really tell what his intentions were. And that's exactly what I'll be doing for this last part of the video. As I mentioned earlier, James Bucket's video is full to the brim with personal attacks towards Beard and all sorts of unfounded accusations to make him look as evil as possible. Even the title itself already communicates exactly what James wants you to learn from the video. When the video came out, it was titled Don't Scam Your Artist, something that Beard never did, but James didn't leave it at just that. A year later, he changed the title to It's Been a Year, I Wonder If He Paid the Rest Yet. This is in reference to the really stupid argument we discussed earlier, in which he justifies the video remaining on YouTube with the unreasonable request that Beard pay absolutely everyone who submitted artworks to him, which we already established he had no reason to do. It doesn't end there, though, as he has continued to beat the dead horse, and the current title of the video is Two years later, his profile slash banner arts changed. Wonder if he paid for those this time. Now, most people won't immediately see what exactly James is doing here, but he's essentially casting doubt onto Beard's integrity as a person, by informing viewers of the possibility that Beard hasn't paid for the artworks he's currently using, long after the whole art controversy, even though James has no way to know whether Beard paid for the current artworks or not, and therefore has zero evidence to back up this notion. This makes it easier for people who aren't aware of the situation to just accept what James says about Beard at face value, since they'll think Beard is this bad person who has made a habit out of not paying for the artworks he uses. James is essentially communicating that Beard is a bad person because what if he didn't pay for his current artworks? He's quite literally throwing shit at Beard not for things he did, not for things he didn't do, but for things he might not have done. Additionally, because he isn't making any explicit accusations here, James has plausible deniability and can defend himself very easily if anyone tries to criticize him. That's just disgusting and childish in my opinion. The video itself does not get any better. James Bucket opens up the video by literally calling the Beard 77 the single biggest problem of the DST community. That's right, James Bucket doesn't think that the biggest problem in the DST community is toxicity or that misinformation is absolutely everywhere. It's not even the literal neo-Nazi that was still uploading videos at the time this was made. According to James Bucket, Beard is a bigger problem than all of those. And maybe my opinion doesn't matter to you, but frankly, if you need to begin your video by calling the person you don't like the biggest problem of the community in order to convince your audience of how bad they are, then maybe the arguments you're trying to present are not as strong as you think they are. James really wants to drive the point home that Beard is a bad person before presenting any arguments, because immediately after saying that, he accuses Beard of a bunch of random things in quick succession that don't add anything to the video and which he refuses to elaborate on. In order, he accuses Beard of cheating in a gameplay, blaming his audience for not helping him grow on Twitch, and plagiarizing Gabriel's design and playing the victim afterwards. I'm not going to comment on the accusations themselves, because these have literally nothing to do with the topic of the video, but I do want to point out what James is doing here. What he's doing is called poisoning the well, which consists of discrediting and ridiculing your opponent before presenting any of your arguments, so that the audience will be more likely to take your side instead. This is literally a manipulation technique, which is really ironic considering the main argument in James Bucket's video is that Beard was manipulating his audience. Throughout the entire video, James makes a lot of random accusations about Beard's intentions with his actions, which I'm showing on screen right now. 
This is a six minute video and there's so many of these that I'm not even going to bother addressing each one individually. I will simply point out something that all of these have in common, which is that not a single one of them is rooted in any evidence or a source to back up those claims. And that James simply throws this out without elaborating further, just stating them like they're facts. I am not claiming that none of these are correct, some of them might be, but without providing so much as a source, James is in no position to make statements about what Beard's intentions were, and therefore the only role these accusations play in the video is to keep making Beard look like a bad person. If James really made this video out of concern for the artist, he would have had no reason to throw all of these unsourced claims which harm Beard's image, even if James believed he was somehow doing a good thing. These should be considered unacceptable in our community, but people straight up celebrate this, and think the content creators were somehow brave? for publicly sending Beard for absolutely no reason. Jazzy's video is extremely tame by comparison, which is why I'm not really going to say anything about it. Compared to James, it really does seem like Jazzy was speaking out of concern for the artist, at least at the beginning. Later on in the video, James puts this face on Beard while simultaneously saying that the art showcase was a scheme, which I don't really have a lot to say about. You may still think James was acting in good faith, but in my opinion nothing speaks more of his intentions than him literally putting an evil face on top of Beard, because, you know, that really is a convincing and thoughtful argument. James also brought up that Beard monetized the art showcase video as if it was a really bad thing. I haven't brought this up yet, but James loves to mention this as much as he can, except why are we supposed to think this is a bad thing? He constantly says this as though Beard is stealing money from the artist, or like he was doing it without their approval, but this is just ad revenue, he's not taking money from anybody, and as far as I know, none of the artists had a problem with this, so I don't understand why James keeps insisting on bringing this up as if it was some scummy thing for Beard to do. Well, actually, I do know why. It's because he's grasping at straws to make Beard look like an evil person, that's exactly what I've been saying. And finally, the cherry on top to this whole ordeal. James ends the video by saying that we shouldn't let a person like Beard777 represent the DST community. But we must really consider if we want a person like him to represent our community. I don't think Beard is an angel, and frankly I don't even like the guy. <laughs> but if we're seriously going to sit here and judge who is a better person to represent the community, then I don't think James is really in any position to be criticizing Beard considering all the false accusations and personal attacks he just made against him in the past 6 minutes. You're free to draw your own conclusions though. And that brings us to the end of this video. I believe at this point I've covered more or less everything I'm aware of relating to this controversy. I'd like to do a small recap of everything that actually happened for those of you who skipped to the end or fell asleep halfway through. The situation started with Beard uploading a video announcing that he would do a showcase for non-channel related artworks from his audience, in which he also announced that he wanted to redecorate his platforms and requested his fans to submit art he would then use. This was not a contest per se, as he made it clear that this was only voluntary work and a reward was not to be expected, although he would later end up promising compensation for those whose artworks were to be used anyway. Many content creators did not agree with the fact that he was, in their eyes, stealing artworks from his fans, even though none of the artists involved actually spoke out against Beard. Said content creators demanded Beard to give what they believed to be proper compensation, which Beard ignored, and then cut contact with anyone trying to push the issue further. This prompted the content creators to release videos publicly denouncing Beard as an evil person, which were full of unsourced or outright false accusations as well as personal attacks, and which had the supposed goal of getting Beard to pay the artist. However, the videos have since not been taken down, despite the fact that Beard has indeed paid anyone whose art he has used in his channel, and his image has been permanently damaged from the controversy, all the while the content creators who enabled the witch hunt against him in the first place never faced any repercussions. I don't think it's hard to see who exactly was wrong in the situation once we actually include the details that nobody mentions. With this video, I'm hoping to put an end to this misinformation and set the precedent that our favorite content creators simply cannot be trusted to handle delicate issues like this. People should be encouraged to verify what they're being told and not just take everything at face value. I want to give a huge thank you to everyone who helped in the making of this video by providing their testimonies and helping to clear misinformation regarding the subject. I especially want to thank those who didn't think that this video was necessary, but still agreed to sharing their side of the story regardless. 
I obviously will not be mentioning the names of anyone who was involved to prevent them from receiving harassment. I spent a long time researching the issue and gathering all the testimonies that I could, which is part of the reason why I ultimately decided to just upload this anyway, instead of letting all that work go to waste. I know this should go without saying, but please do not harass any of the content creators I mentioned in this video, even those that were shown in a negative light. However, I do want to stress the fact that real harm was done to people by the actions of these content creators, and I do believe that they should, at the very least, acknowledge the part that they played in the situation and apologize. We've reached the end of the video now. If you need me to clarify something else, or you'd like to share your opinion, feel free to leave a comment, I'll be reading all of them. If you hated this video and think I'm trying to create drama for attention, feel free to send me death threats down in the comments as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope we all learned something today. Sometimes it's good to have a healthy dose of skepticism, since unfortunately we can't always count on our favorite content creators to be responsible with the influence that they have over our community. This is the only video I'll be making about the subject. Thank you a lot for your support, I'll see you later.